If I only ever built one more car, or one car, this would be the most important one, the last. But the cars outside, the everyday cars that we have that are stamped steel boxes, that are highly inefficient with chairs bolted in them basically, nobody's planning on fixing them. They have a life cycle. Not a good one, a toxic one that requires a lot of energy. But I really care about the environment, I care about the world, I love animals, and I'd like things to be good. But let's be honest, I love race cars. I like doing business, I'm not afraid to make decisions to get things done. And unfortunately, in America, in Western society, the only thing I see our politics doing is dividing everybody so they can get money and power and screw us all over. So screw them. We can do it on our own. Hey, I'm Casey Putch, and that white car back there is my Omega car concept. Now, over 10 years ago, back in 2012, I set forth to build a car that would be a sustainably recycled mass production concept that would be highly fuel efficient. Something that I wanted to get 100 miles to the gallon, but beat my Dodge Viper zero to 60. And I thought that was the best way to show everybody what is actually possible to create. And at the time, back in 2012, I was completely fed up with politics, American politics, international politics. It's all BS and lies, and it was all BS and lies back then. But back in 2008, I really just had it. Politicians don't do anything. They either just want cheap energy, or they pretend that they're going to fix things and empower it and basically just move money around and effectively regulate things into oblivion to where true innovation can't happen anymore. Well, fortunately, I'm an individual not controlled by politicians. So I built this. The question is, why haven't I done anything with it since then? Well, 10 years ago, I didn't have a voice. I didn't have a way for anybody to know it even existed. And respectfully, if no one knows it exists, it doesn't exist. So that didn't work. And I sat on it for a long time. And the other thing is for the last decade plus, I've been mentoring college students, engineering students, and picking up the slack where the American educational system left off and mentoring the breast young engineers with actually doing things with their hands, coming together as a team, and helping them get jobs everywhere from Lockheed Martin to Tesla to GM. So my project, my dreams sit aside. However, in 2024, we live in an idiotic time with politics, truly. You look at one party and they want to take care of the business and make sure we have cheap energy, which I like, but where are we going? Where are they going? What's their plan? You look at another party and sure, they beat down every environmental or social construct to try to make things nice, but do they actually accomplish anything? No, they don't. I'm sick of it. So now it's time to actually do something with it. So today I wanted to chat with you about the Omega car. I have two more videos coming up. The first one's gonna be, I'm gonna do a little on PG testing. I'm gonna drive it just like I'd normally do every day and see what it does with no extra testing, tuning, or anything beyond just my initial concept. Of course, this is diesel. It's a non-hybrid. And that was important for me because nobody understands watts and battery storage and things. And, and suffice it to say, electric cars are not an end-all be-all solution. They have their place. But the thing that's great about diesel, it's a very flexible fuel the world over. Now, building a car for the world, it's not about finding a magic bullet or band-aid of a drivetrain. It's not about electric cars, it's not about hybrid, it's not about gasoline, it's not about hydrogen, it's not about diesel. And the reason being is all of those things have their place for different uses in different actual locations and things around the world right now, all of them. And none of them are an end-all be-all solution. But what is an end-all be-all solution is to actually create something efficient and intelligent that has less environmental impact, that is more sustainably recyclable, that is actually affordable. Cars today are not affordable. Now, I well realize that my background and love is working on handmade, funky, esoteric cars. And everything from Rolls Royce to Ferrari, Lamborghini and Dodge Viper are represented here today. But that has nothing to do with social class. It has to do with the love for mechanics and engineering and craftsmanship and what you can do. But this is what I wanted to do. This is the impact that I wanted to have on the world. Politicians are idiots, having bad impacts. So we'll see what happens. But in any case, like I said, the next video, I'm gonna just drive it. We'll see what it gets miles per gallon without me doing anything special to it. 
In fact, I'm going to drive it without the wheel fairings on it, without a lot of the aerodynamic aids, just to keep it something you do in testing. You know, you don't have everything on. I just want to make sure all systems and things are great. And then the next video, zero to 60, all American, heads up against my Dodge Viper, and I think even a modern C7 Grand Sport Corvette, both very fast cars. What will this do? Because my high efficiency car is effectively running on the same tires as the Dodge Prius and the rolled. It won't hook up. But will it actually be able to beat that Dodge Viper like I originally intended? We're gonna find out. So you guys have to come back for the next two videos. And to be honest, I'm gonna find out. This is all new to me as well. But I handcrafted this thing back in 2012 with that concept. Because at the time, I had some things that I wanted to build and I was reach, researching materials and material sciences and thinking of ways to mass produce various structures. And in doing so, I went, oh my God, there's a load of different ways that I can build an automobile, furniture, home goods, houses, anything that's so much better than what we're doing today for every reason. So I did. And again, I made it triple diesel because the world understands miles per gallon very well. I also have to point this out. If you're considering miles per gallon on something that's a hybrid, are you actually taking into consideration there's already stored energy of electricity on board at, at times also? Because that's not true miles per gallon. That's like doing your miles to gallon or your equivalent driving downhill the whole way. You know, this Rolls Royce can get a thousand miles per gallon if I drive it 10 miles on the first gallon and then push it the other 990 miles by hand. That's a thousand miles a gallon, right? See, the problem is there's things like that that exist out there that people don't understand. And while electricity we like, it's quiet, it's clean where you're at the actual car and plugging it in, that's really neat. You feel like you're doing good to the world. You are not thinking of the entirety of the impact of producing the vehicle and all its componentry and keeping it around. See, one other thing about all these handmade cars around here, they're all fixable and they're worth fixing. But the cars outside, the everyday cars that we have that are stamped steel boxes, that are highly inefficient with chairs bolted in them basically, nobody's planning on fixing them. They have a life cycle, not a good one, a toxic one that requires a lot of energy. It's stupid. Our industry has gone so far down a path there's no coming back and there's no intelligence. No politician, no amount of money is gonna fix it. And the only thing that will are people going out there doing it. I can't tell you this. I do have the intention to build a startup material sciences company. And I'll lend you this tip as well. Not just building things for the sake of IP and production, but all the tests will also be products, home goods, furniture, automobile parts. So if there's anybody out there who really wants to do something interesting for the future that has value the world over, call me. In any case, the Omega car, it's been a really neat thing. I will tell you that it is a monocoque structure. That's not a body on a frame as we think of old cars like maybe that Dodge Viper or a race car might be. No, it's not fiberglass. No, it's not carbon fiber. There's various experimental techniques in it and materials. And my prototype represents a number of different techniques to mass produce, not just one, because I handmade this. And I did so because I wanted to know what I could actually produce. I wanted to know what was possible. So I had to just do it. And I had to find a way to do it by hand and rapid prototype it basically. In regard to the motor, modified, it's 1.9 liter turbo diesel. I've effectively used the most efficient motor that was reasonably available to me in the United States. Keep in mind when I built this, I was somewhere in the area of 30 years old and um, not independently wealthy with any giant grants. <laughs> Sorry, I was gonna say a lot of nasty things about politicians the world over. Can you imagine the amount of money that's being wasted out there? Wasted in Washington, wasted on destroying other people's lives right now in 2024? Can you imagine what would happen if the tiniest fraction of that money actually went to people like me and hopefully you that have ideas and can act on them to make a better tomorrow? Mm, I think we'd have a better tomorrow. In any case, it's a monocoque structure and it's uh, very efficient. 
What makes it fuel efficient also makes it fast. Now, you may say, Casey, the world doesn't need two-seat sports cars. I'd say, you're wrong. We need two sports seat sp sports cars. It's kind of a little joke, tongue in cheek. But the other reason is, let's be honest, Western culture doesn't care how good something is, loyal, efficient, ideal, all those qualities, unless it's sexy and good looking. So I had to be a sports car, two seat, that's what it is. I call it the Omega car. Omega is the last character in the Greek alphabet. Sometimes it's in the end, the alpha, the Omega. Or maybe it just means the last. If I only ever built one more car or one car, this would be the most important one, the last. That's why I call it the Omega car. The other thing about it is, there's many things re regarding cars in general, the ones outside, but the Dodge Viper, oh, it's got headlights specific only to Dodge Vipers, wheels, everything like that. But you know, in the past, maybe even in the 1980s, you can't see them as well on here, but we had lights that were reusable. We did things in the past that actually made stuff affordable to everyday people, but we don't do that now. That was the other thing, from lights to electronics to everything on it, the mindset for mass production is to keep it inexpensive. And if you just have some creativity, it can still be, shall we say, more of an ethical car to the world and affordable and better for the environment. I'm not a crazy climate activist by any means. I'm not gonna be one of those freaks blocking a roadway. I uh, like trees, but you're not gonna see me out being a nut. But I really care about the environment. I care about the world. I love animals. And I'd like things to be good. But let's be honest, I love race cars. I like doing business. I'm not afraid to make decisions to get things done. And unfortunately, in America, in a Western society, the only thing I see our politics doing is dividing everybody so they can get money and power and screw us all over. So screw them. We can do it on our own. Let's see what they're made of now. All right, guys, you need to come back to my next video and see what my car gets miles per gallon. Now, to be fair to me and it, it is a prototype. It has been sitting for basically a decade and I've not done that yet. I haven't tuned it any more than just building and getting it right. So we'll see inherently what the concept will do. Certainly it could do much better and I can tune things from everything from emissions to performance, to anything else to just make it better and better. So it's just gonna be a first go. And then all American zero to 60 drag race, head to head, all the instruments. How quick is it? See you guys next time.